You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast exploring scripture with Dr. T. Michael W. Halcom and Dr. Frederick J. Long. Welcome and enjoy. Hello, I'm Professor Fred Long. I'd like to welcome you to Greek Matters. Greek Matters is a series of devotional thoughts that are based on the Greek text. And so we'll look at the Greek text and compare it with some English translations and consider the meaning and significance of the underlying Greek. Greek does matter. Right now we're going to be looking at the Golden Rule. This is Matthew 7, 12, and it occurs near the end of the Sermon on the Mount. I remember once talking to a a person on the phone, he happened to call me wondering if I was a relative of his, and we struck up a conversation. And in the course of that conversation, he said, you know, you sound like a pretty good guy. And I said, well, you know, the Lord has made me a good person. And uh, at that, he was prompted and said, oh, you're not one of those religious types, are you? And so we kept on talking. And um, in the course of that, he began to justify himself. And he said, well, you know, I follow the golden rule. And in my heart, I thought, huh, I wonder what he means by the golden rule. And he said, I asked him, and he he said, uh, the golden rule is do unto others as they do unto you. And so I said, well, wait a minute, that's not what it really says. So the golden rule may be misunderstood by people, and so we need to look at it very carefully. It it is that important. It really represents kind of a culmination of Jesus' teaching in the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, the reason I say that is because of the statement that occurs in it at the end. Jesus says, For this is the law and the prophets. Now this harkens back to the start of the sermon, where Jesus says, Don't think that I've come to abolish the law and the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill them. So that's how important this verse is, is that it links back to a previous, really a purpose statement of Jesus about the law and his fulfillment of the law and the prophets. So let's look more closely at the Greek text. Now, what I have displayed here is my Logos Bible software, and I have a color coding that you may get used to seeing if you watch more of these Greek Matter devotionals. The green are conjunctions and particles. The orange are pronouns. The red are non-indicative mood verbs. And if this doesn't make sense to you, that's fine. I'll explain it. And the blue are adverbs. Now, one of the nice things I like about this particular software, and there's many other good Bible softwares out there, is that I can turn on something called sympathetic highlighting. So right here, I can select the Greek text, and then over on the right-hand side, I can see the corresponding English translation. Now, Greek doesn't always come over into English one for one. However, there are things in the Greek text that should come over, and they should be pretty evident. Now, one thing right away that I want to point to in this text is that there's a stress on everything. Now, in the English, we just get everything said once in everything, in the Greek panta. But Greek also uses another word for everything that stresses quantity. And so you can see that when I highlight the second word, the same English word is highlighted. Well, in fact, Greek has two words that are stressing everything, and this is a particular emphasis of this verse. Everything. In everything. Now, that's hard to translate when you have two words that are pointing towards the same reality. This is a special type of pronoun. It's called a correlative pronoun of quantity. And another pronoun could have been used, a simple relative pronoun, but this pronoun has been chosen because it stresses quantity. Now, another set of words I want to point out to you are these words right here in the middle, the utos. Utos is an adverb of manner, and here it's helping contribute towards a comparison. So however much you want that people treat you, and this is how I would translate this part of it, however much you want that people would be treating you, 
thus, thus you treat them. Well, what's, what's interesting here is that this word has no translation and umis is not translated. So ke and umis, you can see when I highlight them, are not translated. Well, the umis is a pronoun which means you and it's emphasizing the subject of the sentence here. The verb already means you do or you treat. And so it's a command form. And it's an important command form because it's a present tense imperative form, which means it's stressing ongoing action. This is something that you're repeatedly supposed to do. But the underlying Greek text is stressing even more the subject. You yourselves do. You yourselves be doing. And this is what's emphasized in the Greek text. Now this ke could be and should be translated as also. You also do to others. And so there's a correspondence here, a, a comparison and a stress that just as you or we are wanting that people do to us, we also thus in a like manner should be doing to them. And so these words, I think, can be translated and should be translated and really put the onus on us. And there's supposed to be a correspondence between what we would want that people do to us and what also we do. So what we want and what we do. And this verb for doing or treating is also in the present tense with imperfective aspect and is stressing ongoing action. So Jesus here is stressing quantity, however much, everything, and then also responsibility and agency and comparison between what we want that others would be doing for us and then what we ought to be doing for them. And this is a very important statement, particularly because of its location and because, you know, Jesus came to fulfill the law and the prophets. And right at this moment, he specifies that this, doing this, doing the golden rule is in fact fulfilling the law and the prophets. This is the law and the prophets, he says. Well, I hope this encourages you to look more carefully at the Greek text and consider its meaning. Greek does matter. Interested in growing your ancient language skills but not sure where to start? Glow's House can help. From illustrated readers and short stories to lexicons and grammars, Glow's House offers a variety of resources for beginning, intermediate, and experienced ancient language learners. Head to glowsahouse.com today. Glosa House, language resources for the global community.